Yeah, so that is actually a two-way um, road where you have both elevated insulin um, switching the inflammatory profile of immune cells, um, making them more inclined to release pro-inflammatory proteins, cytokines, and then thus increasing inflammation throughout the body. <clears throat> but you, so that goes that direction, insulin resistance to exacerbating inflammation. But it also goes the other way, where if someone just has a purely inflammatory response, that will then drive mm. insulin resistance. And we see this in autoimmune diseases, and this is an example I highlight in the book, but you can take humans who have rheumatoid arthritis, which is this autoimmune destruction of joint tissue. And, and like any autoimmune disease, there are active and, and um, I guess, inactive phases. So when the disease is really rampant, their joints are really inflamed and hurting, and then it will subside. During those same peaks and troughs of the immune responses, you can track this almost identical shift in insulin sensitivity, that when the disease is active, this autoimmune inflammatory disease, insulin resistance is up. And then when the disease subsides, so too does insulin resistance, and they just shift back to being more insulin sensitive. And so there, and indeed, that is one of the relevant, one of the pillars of chronic insulin resistance, it is inflammation. Without a doubt, chronic inflammation is one of the causal variables of long-term clinically relevant insulin resistance. You know, there's, there's good inflammation and bad inflammation. And by that, I mean that uh, you need some of these inflammatory mediators in order to heal. Like normal recovery is, is an inflammatory process. And so we don't want to try to ever shut down inflammation in general. That would be actually lethal. We need to have it happen, but we don't want it up all the time. And if someone is following a lifestyle that's keeping their insulin up, making insulin resistance, that's going to be exacerbating inflammation throughout the body. And then again, it can go the other way as well. So it starts to feed. It's a vicious cycle. One of the very unappreciated roles of LDL cholesterol, mm. the, the cholesterol containing and triglyceride containing lipoprotein that with LDL, yeah. uh, it is, it, it is very, very involved in immunity. And what's so interesting mm. is someone's eating a meal and their LDL cholesterol climbs that the body's helping reconcile any pathogens that be, may be making their way from the guts into the blood. LDL will physically bind pathogens, mm. take them to the liver and dump them into the bile to be excreted through the, through the intestines. In fact, anyone curious about this, go to PubMed or Google Scholar mm. and just type in immune and LDL and you'll immediately start getting a lot of hits. In fact, to the point that there are some scientists, biomedical scientists, that think that uh, looking at LDL cholesterol in the context of heart health is, is actually um, the incorrect paradigm that the role of LDL in immunity is the one that should be given more attention. DoctorsToTrust.com, world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos designed to share with loved ones.